Many of you are gonna say these are easy questions, but I think they're also very easy questions to mess up. So even in the cases where they seem very simple, it's in our interest to be thorough, to have a plan, and that way, no matter what happens, we don't walk into a trap, we don't fall for a careless mistake. So when we're dealing with unit conversions and there's more than one conversion going on, what I like to do is create a small table. So we're gonna just kind of divide things in half on my scratch paper and just start with any sort of rate or conversion that you see. So um, for many of you, 90 kilometers per hour doesn't necessarily feel like two things, but it can be. But what's un indisputable is one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. That's, that's a conversion, right? So let's put that in our table. And it doesn't really matter how you do it. Just make sure that you write the units. So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. One goes on the left. One goes on the right. Now the next thing to do is to just kind of try to match the unit so that there's the same unit on both sides and that allows us to cancel it. So 90 kilometers per hour, well, we could just say then, all right, 90 kilometers has to go here because we need kilometers on both sides. Then what would go on the other side with that? Well, that would be per hour, so one hour. And this is how we turn things like speeds into rates, into these kinds of unit conversions. So 90 kilometers per hour, we get rid of kilometers, we get rid of kilometers. Now we need to get rid of meters per, uh, we need to get to meters per second. So one thing I could do here is, um, since it's kind of like an X that we're asking for, right? Which of the following is equivalent? We are, these are all kind of like an X number that we're solving for. We could just put X meters here per one second, right? That's now the answer choices. We don't know exactly which one, we're not picking one, but let's cross out meters, cross out meters, but we still have a problem. We have hours and seconds, but we can do that conversion because we hopefully know how time works and we can just go down the line, right? So one hour is 60 minutes, right? So that gets rid of hours, gets rid of hours. And one second, well, we gotta get rid of that too, and we've got, gotta get rid of the minutes, so one minute that's going to go on the right, is 60 seconds. And when we've done all this right, as, assuming our handwriting is correct, uh, we can do, we can get rid of everything. So minutes are gone, minutes are gone, seconds are gone, seconds are gone. When all the units are gone, we know we're done. Now we just go and we, we multiply down the columns, right? So we're basically going down each side and we're going to multiply each thing. So on the left side, we have one times one times X times 60 times 60. Um, I could just use a regular calculator for that. 60 times 60 is 3,600. So 3,600 X is this column. And then on the right side, we have a thousand times 90. Just make sure you don't lose any zeros. So I'm going to use the calculator for that as well. So that's going to be 90,000, one, two, three. Then put an equal sign between them and solve for X. So now we do the final step here. Sometimes we don't even have to do this step, but divide by 3,600 and we're gonna get X is equal to, so 90,000 divided by 3,600 is 25. And now we can go back to the units. What were the units involved with this X? Meters per second, right? So now do we have that? Yes, it's 25, it's choice A, that is the answer. And we could see where we might've gone wrong if we lost a zero, we might've gotten the 250. I don't know where the 32 and the 324 come from. Those are probably answers we get from leaving out one of the units. My guess is it has something to do with these 260s that if we left one of those out, we would get that other, other answer. So this is the benefit of these kinds of situations where we create this table is we can see every single thing happen. And as long as we write down the units, we are not gonna lose track of anything. The goal of this table method is to have all the units crossed out. That's how we know we haven't forgotten anything. And it's just about balancing. It also kind of, as we go, gives us things to do so we don't have to come up with the whole plan of how this is gonna work from the start. Just pick any unit that you see or any conversion that you see to start, write that in the column on the tops, and then go down the list and keep trying to cross something out. Eventually everything will cross out and you'll be done and you'll have the answer confidently.